Hey everyone, so I've just uh, the morning time, see lots of water in the stream, it's been raining all night. Um, so let's do a proper hydro test, see where we stand with it. I know what it is um, already, how it's working. I'll let you know I'm pleased with it. Um, a few things we're going to do, tune it up and stuff, but uh, I'll show you exactly how it all works. And uh, I'll show you each individual nozzle coming on and uh, what power we get out of it as the nozzles come on and the uh, minimum powers and the maximum powers and give an idea can't get exact numbers because I can't uh, trap all the water but uh, give you an idea of what efficiencies we're looking at um, just the rough figures you know so yeah turbines on currently oh falling over turbines on currently nice and quiet this new turbine um, so yeah I'm gonna turn it all off from here just leave the manual nozzle on but turn it off while, while it's recording for you and then I'll go back into the shed and uh, turn them all on you can watch it all come on and see how it reacts and see what power we get out of it right okay then so you're uh, set up you should be able to see everything we've got pressure gauge here it's all on at full at the minute we've got pressure gauge here adjustable spear valve this is the two liter a second nozzle and this is about one liter a second nozzle and this one here is the manual one which is going to be stayed on. So I'm going to go back to the shed, I'm going to turn them all off and then I'll turn them on individually and show you what power they make as they come on and we work our way up through the power. Right, let's do it. Okay then everyone, we are back in the shed, um, in the power shed, so everything's turned down low. As you can see we're at 22 watts, I hope you can see that okay. I'll bring it close to the camera for you so you can see 22 watts around about, that's just that one manual nozzle. So let's uh, turn on the first nozzle, this is one litre per second nozzle. there'll be a, a dip as it as the um, valve starts opening and then we start to make some power so there we go we're at 133 watts on that nozzle 131 133 or so um, now in the lower ranges we're not very efficient in the higher ranges we're not as efficient and in the middle somewhere we reach peak efficiency it's just how it works uh, it's a rule of diminishing returns type thing. Once you get higher, you get losses, and in the beginning you have to overcome all the losses. So somewhere in the middle is where you reach peak power. So here isn't the most efficient point. Around about once I turn this next nozzle on. on we reach a very mostly efficient point uh, where the least amount of water for the most amount of power um, so now you'll see we'll get right up that's sort of around 320 watts um, which is good so now we have three nozzles on and we still have the spear valve left to go so let's open the spear valve um, where are we open up the spear valve
as we open that you'll see that the power will start to go up 313 as it drops uh, while it opens and then 344 358 364 378 382 391 so that is about our limit 402 I've seen 420 depending on what MPPT it finds but that is about our limit at the moment like I was saying once you get into those upper ends um, it's hard to get much more out of it because your losses go up significantly. Bear in mind, this is the power that's going into the battery. This isn't the tur the power the turbine's generating. There's losses involved in um, the uh, bridge rectifier and the charge controller and so on. This is the power that's going into the batteries. Uh, so yeah, so on top of that, I can also um, do everything from a web-based app. So we can go on there now. Here we go, shows me that I've got two nozzles on and then I've got my spear valve open and close. So I can close the nozzle. So we'll just close that. You see the light went off on the controller and now our power would have gone down too. See as we close nozzles, power goes down. So I can go back on my web-based app. I can do this, use this app anywhere where I'm connected to the, um, to the internet and um, uh, on my Wi-Fi connection, so as long as I'm connected to the Wi-Fi then I can, uh, I can use this app. Turn off nozzle 2 and then we'll watch the power decrease. goes down. Okay, so the last thing I'll show you is um, as I turn the spear valve right down, we'll bring the spear valve in now, you'll see the power drop right down. So we bring that down. Once that spear gets to the end of its travel, it will reach a, uh, an amp limit. This is reading how many amps the motor is drawing, and once it reaches that limit, it will self shut off, so that I can't over tighten that spear valve and damage the threads of the uh, of the spear. So you see, as it gets down to that sort of 22 watts for that one small nozzle that's always on the manual one, it'll click out. Ready now? There we go. So that's how we make sure it doesn't over tighten. So that is the system. Okay, so what you would have seen there is uh, that manual nozzle was on continuously. We never turned that one off, so that's what it was at the start. Then we turned on this one here, one litre a second. Then we turned on this one here, about two litres a second. And then we unwound the spear valve all remotely from the shed. And you would have seen, as, as I did that, you would have seen the pressure drop. Now the reason the pressure drops is because as more water moves through this pipe, it has to move along the edges of the pipe. And as it does that, it creates friction and losses. Now those losses um, mean that we lose pressure at the end. So as we open up the nozzles, we lose pressure. If there was no loss in the pipe, the pressure would stay exactly the same regardless of how many nozzles we open. But we open nozzles, we get losses in all the fittings and everything, so the pressure goes down. So yeah, I'm going to turn everything back on because it's... Uh... Uh, the batteries could do with a with, uh, good charge. I've got the hot water tank on and everything in the house, so we'll, uh, we'll turn it all back on. Now, it's worth saying that this, isn't, this is a hobby for me, but this isn't like messing around. This system does actually power my house. Um, if you're new around here, then, um, then this is a completely off-grid system, and I actually I do electric cooking uh, and everything, and, and electric hot water and everything off of this uh, during this time of the year and throughout the winter. So yeah, this isn't messing around and, and just playing with the water. This is actually my electricity that powers my house. Now, the 400 watts, I was expecting a bit more, if I'm honest, um, but I know where the problems are in it. And in that upper end, uh, where we start to use more water but get less of a return for it, I know there's lots of gains I can make in that efficiency. Um, on top of that, there is more water available too that I could use if I wanted, so I can make the nozzles a little bit bigger. Um, but I think we should address uh, some of the losses first, some of the 90 degree bends I can sort out. Uh, the spear valve, the guy that made it, there's a, he's made a, a new version of it with a different profile, which is a more efficient version. Uh, we can tune the heights of the jets perfectly, and we'll definitely see that 500 watts without getting any more water through it, I believe. But I can also probably put more water through it and see 600 at a push. Uh, but that... Uh, 400 watts still equates to 10 kilowatt hours a day, which is close to the UK average of how much power 
uh, it's produced and I have the solar on top of that as well. So yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Um, let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing uh, like a tuning, a hydro tuning video where we'll go through all of the little fine tuning and squeeze out every last little watt of it. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I really enjoyed making it and it's not going to end here. Like I say, we've got the tuning and um, uh, I'm going to do a tour of it and stuff for people that haven't uh, watched the whole series. Maybe they just like to see a tour. Um, so I'm going to do that too. So a really big thank you to everyone that helped. I didn't do this alone. Uh, the controller was um, made and sent to me by a subscriber, designed and made by him. Very, very, very pleased with it and just amazing, uh, very generous. And so thank you very much for that. Uh, help from my friend Raf uh, with the nozzle alignment and stuff, lent me some tools to do that. And uh, John as well, John, who uh, was a big part of uh, converting me to use the Turgo turbine, uh, many years experience and uh, he sort of led me along in those early stages of uh, getting all the sizes and everything right and continues to do so and also manufactured the uh, spear valve that I'm using for the turbine. So thanks to all the people and anyone else that helped along the way. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.